unity within the parliamentary system, within the parliamentary parties, in the mighty name of Jesus. I break, Father Lord, every form of discord. I break the disunity amongst them in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak new life, new life, new life to come forth over parliament and the parliamentary parties right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit, I saw a massive dam and the waters gushing from two separate places and it was flooding the United Kingdom and as it was flooding I saw people rising up with axes and they were bringing out things that looked like ancient statues they were just breaking them and breaking them and breaking them down and I heard like and the Spirit of the Lord took me to Ezekiel and he said what do you see he said I see dry bones. He said, prophesy. He said again, what do you see, my daughter? I said, I see the breath of the Lord. He said, speak the breath of the Lord unto these bones and let them rise. I see the breath of the Lord over the United Kingdom, bringing a new wind, a new sound and a new beginning over the whole of the United Kingdom. And I still saw the water, it was gushing and it was gushing and he said, this is a water of the living God coming to wash away every institution, every ancient thing. I decree over us in this nation that the revival has begun in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I decree and I declare today, Father Lord God Almighty, that United Kingdom will be for Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every ancient thing that is in this land, Father Lord, let them be destroyed from their roots in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord. I know that you have begun a new thing. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 I'd like to share three scriptures. One is for the, the leader of our nation. The other one is for... Thank you. For example, it's been on my heart for a long time. This is Exodus uh, chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. Remember when Laban, uh, uh, Moses' father-in-law, said that you can't take all this burden upon yourself. You need to choose people to delegate authority. And this is, this is what um, the prayer, he said, Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, and men that know the truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all times. So we pray that our leader of the nation will choose men who fear God, who know the truth, and hate covetousness in the name of Jesus. The next scripture is for us, the church, is Amos Chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Father, in the name of Jesus, let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream in this nation, in the UK. And the last scripture, I just want to give you an example of, of God. And we're talking about passion. We need to be passionate about what, what we do. We hear, for example, in, in Isaiah 42, verse 13, it says, The Lord, this is the Lord speaking, The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal, his passion. He shall stir up his zeal, his passion, um, uh, like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud, and he shall prevail against his enemies. So we need to, if God has to stir up the passion in his heart, how much more we need to stir up the passion and the zeal in our hearts like mighty men and women and shout and prevail against our enemies. Praise the Lord. Um, got uh, a revelation uh, just a few seconds ago. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 24 and the Bible says after he drove the man out he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim 
and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Um, I believe uh, while hands were being placed here, uh, there was an angel with a sword of fire. And I believe God is going to start igniting a lot of people. And as the sword is bringing, because he was resting the sword on each shoulder. So I believe there's going to be uh, signs, miracles, and wonders returning back to the church in form of revival. And at the same time, the sword is not just on the good side, but at the same time, it brings judgment. It brings judgment on the on the on the on the on the play on the on the uh, how would I put it on on the establishment that God has been wanting for a long time that you know repent from your ways and you haven't and it is time that God is separating the wheat from the chaff because it is time for the country to arise and the true churches to arise and the people be liberated from whatever has held them down. Jezebel has run through this country for a long time. And it is about time that God is delivering his people. And thank God that you guys are here tonight. I give God the praise and the hallelujah. And I hope to see you guys in heaven someday. And on the time of revival in Jesus' mighty name. The first thing that came to mind is singleness. The Lord stopped my eyes on a young lady, a beautiful young lady there. And she spoke to me about singleness and saying he's bringing to an end the imbalance in the church where there's masses of single women and no men. The second thing he said is uh, Malachi, the verse that says, we'll bring the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the father. And he says that's the key to stopping drugs and knife crime and bringing the youth to Christ. So when I speak over the youth of the United Kingdom in the name of Jesus, that they will drop mines and they will drop guns and pick up your sword, the sword of the spirit. I speak into the men of this nation and they will rise up in your strength and you strengthen them in the inner man. That you open their ears, that you open their eyes, and you set them free from what holds them back. I pray over the women that you strengthen them as they pray and intercede and cry out to you, that you hear their cries. Father, bring the prodigals home in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, I, I saw several bright lights in the sky, and it was almost like a reverse of when you see a city all lit up at night and you see the, the artificial lights, but this was spiritual lights that I could see in the sky and I could see them rising up and rising up. And they were the prayers of the saints. But some of them were much higher than others and some of them were brighter than others and they were drawing the light of the other ones towards them. And I, I feel that that was part of what you were launching here today, that it's, it's the people coming together in their prayers and then I could see them almost like they were dancing together, the lights were dancing and he was reminding me that the, the, the root word for Passover and dance, it's the same Hebrew root word and just as we come into this, this time of, of coming towards Passover, I just feel like he's reminding us of that, that, that it's a time of purity, it's about a time of just really recognizing what the blood of Jesus has done for us. And that he's saying, come up higher, who will be the ones who will shine as those bright stars, who will be the ones that will outshine the lights of the city and will be seen for me and show my glory will be seen on them. Amen. Um, I saw children um, like soldiers and they were just marching. And so it's funny because that's what the old lady also talked about, children. And the scripture, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 says, Here I am and the children whom the Lord has given me we are for signs and wonders in the United Kingdom from the Lord of hosts who dwells amongst us. And Psalm 127 says, Lo, and verse 3, Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Verse 4, as arrows in the hands of the mighty man, so are the children of the youth. And so we just want to decre decree over the children in the United Kingdom, that the enemy would not take them. Gender neutrality, them not knowing who they are, that is not going to be the portion of our children and the children in the United Kingdom. We stand against the plan of the enemy over the children because we know that the children are the ones who are going to be the 
future leaders. So we stand as watchmen. We stand as intercessors. We take authority that God has given us against the darkness. We take authority over alcoholism in our children. And we stand as one united in Christ and said that God, as you have said that these children are going to be soldiers. They're going to be marching. They're going to be changing and taking territories. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe the Lord is saying that he's calling watchmen who will be a living sacrifice themselves, who will put themselves on the altar as the Lord leads, who will worship in spirit and truth. <laughs> he's releasing an Elijah spirit that will call the church to repentance and it starts in you as the watchman. He's looking for men and women who will pay the cost to know him no matter what that cost is, he will love his presence, his truth, his humility and his righteousness more than anything that he does for you or anything that he gives us. And I believe he's saying, I'm so proud of you because there are many of you here tonight who in this season have been dying to everything that you hoped I would give to you. And you're still worshipping me and rejoicing in the privilege of knowing me and that hope that I've given you for this nation and not just for your own life. And I will restore to you the things I've spoken about. But at the moment, I need you to keep on the altar the very things that mean the most to you. And in exchange, pray for this nation and for everything that you're believing that she can be. Because you have in your hands the ability to call it into being. And I see this fire going up from those of you who are in this place where your, your, your worship is burning because you have so much of yourself and your hopes and your dreams actually on the altar. And I'm reminded of how Ezekiel, the Lord even took his wife, the delight of his eyes, and he asked him to worship through that place of grief. And in doing so, he changed a nation. He was a living prophecy for the fact that the Lord was calling those to him who would love him above everything, even the most precious things in our lives. And his faith and obedience and yours can be just the same. You're a man or a woman just as he was, had the ability to call God's kingdom in a way that transformed the world. So I just thank you, Father. That I believe you are birthing something here tonight, which if the Bible was being written now, you'd be writing about it. And I thank you for a fresh courage that you're releasing tonight with that Elijah spirit. That we would not be intimidated and we would not believe the enemy's lies that what we're doing is insignificant. I thank you, Lord, for a, a humbleness of heart that knows that it's by your grace that we do anything but also the significance to know that every choice we make matters, not just in our lives, but in our country. Thank you, Father. Amen. I just sense that revival is here, and I just keep seeing this big ball of fire, and it's actually shaking like it's just about to burst and the lord says it's not no longer time for complacency it's time to get up because the revival is being birthed in each one of us who has heard the word today and the fire is ready to burst so the people of god need to get up and pray and watch the enemy has been defeated because we are believing believers and we truly believe this is the season for revival. We have travailed and we have waited patiently. And the Lord says, my people who are called by my name, if you go down on your knees and pray and confess your sins and cry out to me, I will heal that land. Because this is a precious nation. I birthed this nation for a purpose. And the season to see the purpose that the Lord created you came for is now. 
So the people of God, get up and pray. It's not time to just stand and watch. You're watching and praying and seeing and declaring and decreeing that the things of heaven are down here on earth. And you will see, as I have said in my word, the Lord says, you will see those miracles. You will see the lame walk. You will see the blind eyes open. You will see the deaf ears opening. And you will see the dead rise because the resurrection spirit is present now. People, get up. The Lord is speaking. Let our ears open to hear his word and our eyes open to see the things that he wants to show us. Just as it says in Revelation 4, and when John was praying and he looked up and he saw heaven open and suddenly he was pulled into the presence of the Lord. And the Lord says, look, come up here and I will show you the things that are going to happen in this season. Uh, what the Lord showed me was um, was Parliament, Westminster. It's in a place of reconstruction. You see, divine design, there's going to be reconstruction in our own lives. And it's mercy over judgment. Parliament is in a place of reconstruction. You want to lift your hopes up. There was hope. There's... Um, Parliament is a place of influence, but as Dr. Sharon told us today, it's spiraling to a new level of influence in the kingdom of God. So I believe it's a place of reconstruction. It's mercy over judgment. And as we see the shift, there's a sense that Big Ben is not working at the moment because it's a time of reconstruction. But when it's the appointed time, God's glory is revealed. Hallelujah. Um, when I was sitting down, I just saw the breath of God. The breath of God just blowing over the whole of UK. His breath just declaring truth. And I just want to read two very short scriptures. And one is Job 33, 4, and it says, By his breath, the heavens are cleared. His hand has pierced the fleeing serpents. And the other one's taken from John 16. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. So Father, we just welcome your breath. Your breath, God, upon this land. Your breath that declares truth, God. Your breath that moves every non-truth God your breath God that surpasses God every principality God that breaks down every non-truth God breath of heaven we welcome you into our schools we welcome you into our churches our pews we welcome you into the corridors God we welcome you into the hospitals God we welcome you back into our hearts and our homes Lord have your way God on this land God breathe on this land and we welcome you God to partner with us God we bow down before you King of Kings and Lord of Lords we reverence you we welcome your breath we welcome your breath we welcome your truth have your way Papa have your way at different times. When um, Jennifer was ministering, when she asked us to see, I mean, forgot to open her eyes to see, I saw hook, fish hook, flash over my face. And uh, I didn't see it clearly at first, but it began to be clearer and it was big. And what came to me is go a fishing, fishes of men. And I believe God is releasing grace for souls, for 
people to pray for souls. And I believe, uh, I didn't know it until I was standing there. I didn't get the full revelation. But when she was speaking, God began to give it to me that it's not going to be by you going on the streets. It's going to be in intercession. And it's going to be in the declaration. And it's going to be even through families. You know, you pray for your families. But God is, has released that. And, you know, it's a hook. It's for fish. So go a fishing. And <laughs> the second one I received was uh, the second. I mean, when we were declaring and praying and we were making a shout, um, I heard the word fireballs. God is releasing people to be fireballs. And the scripture that God gave to me was um, Isaiah 47. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to, uh, a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to seek before. I believe that what the Lord is saying is a fireball cannot be contained into a system. A fireball does not fit into a system. And when you're a fireball, when you roll, fireball destroys everything in its way. So what the Lord is saying is releasing people to be fireballs as you go, whether into your communities, wherever you go, that fire is going to begin to destroy things that are not of God, things that hold the nations down, things that hold the communities down. So but you are going to be that fire that as you walk through is the presence of God and everything that God has not, you know, uh, commissioned in that community or wherever you are is going to be that scripture as stubbles. But now, tonight, when we were sitting there talking about the parliament, um, the Lord drops into my spirit about Caiaphas that spoke the mind and heart of God concerning Jesus when they put him in the panel. And I went and I looked for the scripture. And um, when Caiaphas said that um, you don't understand what's happening, it's better for one person to die for the nations than for, um, you know. Uh, and then the, um, the Bible says that it was God that spoke to him what um, the will of God was that was going to happen. So, Father, I'm welcome to this to pray in the parliament that the Lord will raise up Caiaphas in the house of parliament that will speak the heart and mind of God concerning this nation. Not what they want, not what they, but what they feel, but they will utter in their speech, in their statements, the exact things that God has ordained for this nation. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just declare that right now, every word of life, every word that you have spoken concerning our nations, concerning individuals, we decree and we declare in the spirit and we call them forth. We call forth your will concerning this nation. Father, we say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done, even in the United Kingdom. Father, we receive that which you have released in this nation, and we'll say we will not settle, even for less than what you want for this nation. Father, we declare right now, in the spirit realm, we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, we say let your truth, Father, let your righteousness, and let your judgment be established even in the House of Parliament, concerning the decision for this nation. Father, we just pray, oh God, for there is a May, Father, that you will speak through her, your heart and your mind. And as you speak, however you're going to use, there shall be an agreement, Lord, of what you want to do, Lord God Almighty, in the name of of Jesus because in the middle of chaos that is where you fulfill your purpose thank you father in Jesus name I just heard um, two words um, and I feel the Lord saying watchmen declare reformation and resurrection over the government 
Reformation came in this nation. I'm not a historian. But the Lord just reminded me, it came from divorce. It came from a human agenda. It came from division. But from that man's agenda, God brought reformation to the church. But God used it. The enemy had a plan, but the Lord allowed it because he had a greater plan. Then resurrection. It's Easter. The government's in recess. This is so the watchmen stand and pray and declare life from death. Things have to die for life to come. The disciples were discouraged. This nation is discouraged. People are tired. People are tired. People are agreeing with the bad news. But we have this recess to stand at Easter, the actual resurrection power, what Christ has done, and to declare this. So we are to declare reformation over this nation, reformation over this government, reformation over the church, and resurrection power. We have the resurrection power of Jesus in us, and we do not need to agree with death, but with life, in Jesus' name. Um, I've got this scripture, um, Song of Solomon's, and I I feel this uh, refers to uh, government, Brexit, Europe, um, and it's catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, but iron vines have tender grapes, and the tender grapes are the revival. So in Jesus' name, Lord, will you catch every fox, Lord, every fox that is spoiling the vine, every fox, Lord, every fox, every fox, Lord, every fox, Lord, in every nation that is spoiling the vine, the grapes on the vine. While praying in the spirit, I had um, this verse that came into my mind. And when I began to think about it, it's Genesis chapter 1, when the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the earth, and because the earth was formless. And uh, I know now that the spirit of the Lord is hovering over his church. And the next thing that happened, God spoke, he said, let there be light. So I want us to be in agreement tonight, after the count of three, let's say, let there be revival, so that God can do it in the UK. Are you ready? One, two, three. Let there be revival. nostrils of the Lord but then suddenly there was another smell in his nostrils and what was going up to the Lord was the prayers of the saints and that was what he was smelling and it was our prayers that were rising up. Okay, um, while I was sitting there what I actually saw was um, springs of water gushing out and I know somebody mentioned something like that earlier. So I saw like this fountain of water just gushing out and I know that the Lord says that the Holy Spirit will you know, be like rivers of living water gushing forth. But what also came to me was Joshua 15 where Caleb, um, one of the spies who went into the promised land with Joshua, only the two of them had the faith to take the promised land. And um, Caleb had thrown out a challenge for his, for somebody who would take a hill, a mountain, and it was his brother who actually took up the challenge, and he had offered his daughter as a reward. So um, Joshua 15 verse 16, and um, Caleb's daughter decided to approach her dad, and she said to him, Caleb said to her, what do you wish? And she said to him, give me a blessing. Since you have given me the land in the south, Give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. And so I believe that we are, you know, the sons and daughters of the Most High God. We have the authority. He has given us the land. He has given us this land. And I believe that as we position ourselves to ask for the upper and the lower springs, he will give it to us. 
So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we can come to you at any time. We thank you that you have given us this land, this great land of the United Kingdom. And, Father, we want more. We want everything that you want. And so we ask you, Lord, to release to us the upper and the lower springs. We claim it in the name of Jesus. And we pray for times of refreshing for this nation, times of refreshing for Parliament, for the government, for our Prime Minister. Lord, it's been a bruising, bruising time, but we declare times of refreshing are coming. For the government, for your nation, for your church, from the top to the bottom, we, we speak a blessing and we speak the release of springs of living water in this nation. Amen. I kept on getting the picture while I was sitting down of the heart. And all I was seeing is one side of the heart, the arteries were clogged up. And the other side of the heart, the blood was just flowing through half of the heart. And I just saw the Lord just breathing on this heart and just blowing away one side. It was going, and then I just saw it red. And the love of God just flowing through this heart. And then I was asking, Lord, what is this? And he said, that is the love that I have for this nation. The love of God is over this nation. And in all of what we've heard tonight, it just, at this heart, is life. Life, the blood of Jesus, is over this nation. sitting there, all I've been hearing were two words, Brexit, no deal, Brexit, no deal. And um, I've been reading that Songs of Solomon, um, what the other lady came and said, catch us the little foxes, for our grapes are still tender, for the vines of our grapes are still tender. I was just reading it there and meditating on it, and then she came out and said it again. And so we just decreed that concerning Brexit, the will of God will be done. And every contrary law, every law that represents the foxes, because there's a birthing, God is birthing something new in the UK. The church is birthing something new. And so, yes, the grapes are still tender. Every law that wants to squash those grapes, which are the little foxes, the prayer we are praying today releases the fire of God to catch them, and they will not manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. 